Lisa is the president of the company that I work for, and she comes to me one day and she said she'd like me to consider making a rocket. I probably should explain why she wants me to make a rocket. Uh, she started a employee motivation sales campaign kind of thing this year that involves space and rockets, kind of like, you know, get off to a rocket start, shoot for the moon, that kind of thing. And as people meet uh, goals or major accomplishments, they're going to sign their name on the rocket and that'll be displayed in the lobby of the building. So that's the purpose of the, uh, of the rocket. I'm thinking a rocket, you know, like a little rocket. And she holds her hand out and it's about four feet off the ground and she says, no, a, a rocket. <laughs> I said, all right, well, I'm not quite sure how I do that, uh, but let me think about it. Um, so given that, you know, it's, it's, she's one, that she's president of the company, so it's, uh, I figure, well, it's probably a good idea if I go ahead and, you know, seriously consider making a rocket. So the more I thought about it, the more I said, well, that, that could be kind of a challenge, you know, make something that big. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly how I was going to do that at the moment. I knew I was probably going to use a segmented turning process and, and, and uh, for most of it and to kind of go from there. So what I did was I found a piece of clip art on the internet that was kind of a, I don't know, kind of a cartoonish shaped rocket, which I thought would look pretty cool. Uh, so then I, what I did was I blew it up into a larger plan so I could do my calculations for the rings and things on it. And this is what I came up with. I know that probably didn't come out real well on the, on the video, being, being that it's pencil on a piece of craft paper, but uh, armed with that uh, plan, I went ahead and, and uh, started um, building, putting the rocket together. Uh, I just used some pine that I got from the local home center. Uh, worked fine. It was going to be a painted project anyway. So stay tuned to this video, and I'll show you how I made my segmented rocket. I'm using a wedgie sled to cut the segments for this project. Uh, the boards are just a, they're a little over two inches tall, so I can uh, run them through the drum sander, get them down to two inches. Uh, the difference here from most projects is I'm I'm standing the boards on edge, so uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult, but not impossible. So the wedgie sled worked out pretty well. Uh, cut the six, sixteen segments for each ring, and they went together perfectly. Once they're cut, we're going to go ahead and glue it. I'm using, using some Type Bond 3 here. Uh, no particular reason other than that's what I have. So it's just a matter of gluing these up. I'm going to use two band clamps on each one of these because of the height of the uh, height of the ring. After putting the rings through the drum sander, getting them all down to two inches, I'm going to uh, stack them up here and see how we did. You need a way to hold these this piece on the lathe. So what I have is a couple of pieces of plywood. I got it screwed to a faceplate. Uh, the center disc is just there to give the thing some mass and to uh, uh, give a place or the screws to bite into. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn a little rabbit on the outside edge here until I get the 
uh, center rings to fit on each one of them. I made two, one for each uh, of the center rings. It was just a matter of keep making the minor adjustments to that rabbit until I got it so the piece fits on uh, securely like it does here. I'm going to use my large jaws to press this piece on. Uh, because I'm going to need to take it off and reverse it, I'm going to go ahead and use just hot glue to hold it on there. These two rings are going to be where the two halves of this uh, rocket are joined together. Uh, they're about in the center. They're the widest rings. I think it was ring 10 and 11 or something like that. But uh, I need to turn this now because when I get ready to glue this together, it'll be too big to put on the lathe. So I need these two at, exactly at the same diameter. I've taken the rings off the glue block and I'm going to go ahead and reverse them and glue them back on using hot glue and then once I get that done I can start building up the uh, top and bottom halves of this project. This will be the top half of the rocket that I'm going to show here, but the bottom half was put together in exactly the same way. I also put a glue on the uh, next ring that goes on. Uh, glue it on with using the large jaws. I did put some clamps on it because the diameter is so large, I, with pressing in the center, I couldn't get a good tight fit. So I put some clamps on to care of that. Finally time to start doing some turning on this project, so I'm going to use a half inch bowl gouge here to knock off the edges and the corners on the rings, uh, get things turned uh, mostly round and, and uh, running true, and then I'll switch to a scraper to clean this up. The piece is so large I can only do part of it from this side, then I have to switch the tool rest to the other end and finish up the other half. Time to finish up the other end of this uh, upper portion of the rocket. Uh, it's running pretty true considering its size, but I, I'll take a little off just to get everything running true. And that last piece, the, the very tip of the nose piece, that's just a solid piece of wood. Uh, it was really too small to make into a segmented piece, so that top piece is a, a solid piece of uh, pine. Here I'm going to just 
feel with my fingers for any high spots and on the on the piece and I'll, I'll mark them with a pencil and that way when I get ready to use a scraper I'll know what, uh, what parts to take off. Before I part this nose piece off, I want to do some sanding. So I just started with some 80 grit, uh, smoothed everything out, and then finished with 120 and called it quits. Uh, it's going to be a painted piece anyway. After I parted off this, uh, separated the nose piece, uh, I didn't do any more turning. Uh, I just used some uh, 80 grit sandpaper and hand sanded it to final shape. This is the very bottom ring of the bottom half. Uh, I need to turn a little rabbit on the inside of here because I'm going to put a piece of plywood in it and that's what I'm going to use to with the tailstock to hold this piece between centers. So otherwise I wouldn't have a way to do that. So uh, just turn a rabbit and then get a piece of uh, cut a piece of plywood that will fit in there and we're good to go. Alright, this is the bottom half mounted on the lathe as you can see on the tailstock there. I'm using it to, against a piece of plywood that I just put on. So the process is pretty much the same. Half inch bowl gouges and then a couple of scrapers till I get it turned to the shape that I want. Using a round nose scraper here, it, it I got it skewed a little because it was the piece was a little grabby. It was still not exactly round, so it was uh, it was a little grabby. But once I got that off, then I went ahead and put it and used it like a traditional scraper there, right there. You can see that. This is where turning those two ha two rings to the same diameter really pays off. I just put a little glue on the, the bottom half and then the top half fits uh, on nice and just use a little rub joint till the uh, glue sets up and we're good to go. And just a little bit of sand and get rid of any excess glue and uh, cleans up that joint pretty nice. Of course our rockets won't stand up unless we make some uh, legs for it so uh, 
I got three here I'm just cutting out of some uh, clear pine uh, and using some relief cut to get around the curves. I got a half inch blade and a bandsaw. And at the end of the day I was really too lazy to change it to something smaller. So a few relief cuts and you're able to make those curves okay with that size blade. I did make a template which I have glued to the top piece, uh, top leg here. I actually cut out four because you never know when one of them's not going to play nice and uh, you have to use and need an extra one and the bad thing would be to go back and have to make another one after all the other ones are done. So there's actually four here being sanded. Pocket screws and glue are going to hold the legs onto the uh, bottom of our rocket. I just ease the uh, edges on both sides uh, of, the, of the legs with a quarter inch uh, round over bit. I use some new glue on this piece called Quick and Thick. It's supposed to set up in 15 minutes, so we'll see. Uh, I didn't really need it for this glue these legs on, but since I just bought it, I felt like gluing something with it. So, <laughs> so it's just a matter of uh, putting the legs on. I had already put them on, so I knew, knew where the holes were. So it's just a matter of fitting them back on again and tightening them down. I use some uh, plugs to fill the pocket hole screws. It's just a matter of gluing them in. Once the glue dried, I cut them off and sanded them flush, and that takes care of uh, covering up those holes. Here's our rocket ready for paint. It has a total of uh, 309 pieces. After masking off the fins and the nose piece, it's time to spray the body of this uh, rocket. I got some uh, paint called aluminum, which is kind of a metallic looking silver, which is kind of nice. I did prime the main, I did prime the piece beforehand, even though the paint says you didn't need to include a primer. I didn't want any of the pine, pine bleeding through the finished coat of paint. So I went ahead and primed it first. With the main body painted, I went ahead and masked it off, and now I'm going to paint the nose piece and the, the legs uh, a nice red. Well, there we go. After a couple of coats of red on the uh, piece, uh, we're ready for blast off. <laughs> Well, that's how I made my rocket. Certainly was a challenging project, but it was a lot of fun. I said in my previous video on laying out segmented turnings that you're really only limited by your imagination when it comes to this type of woodworking and turning. Of course, you have some equipment restrictions. If you have, like this is a 14 inch lathe, so I can't turn a 16 inch vessel on it. Uh, but other than that, uh, if you can draw it out on a piece of paper and lay it out into segments and rings, you can probably make it on uh, whatever equipment that you have. Uh, to me, it's one of the, and I enjoy that type of turning probably more than anything. So uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a, it was a great project and the, uh, the end product exceeded my expectations actually. So uh, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, uh, please go ahead and subscribe. And everybody out there, take care and have a great day.